Okay, so as many of you might have seen, uh, I just tried to go live twice, and because I, I don't have my actual internet installed yet into my new apartment that I just moved into, I was using my mobile hotspot on my cell phone, and it just wasn't strong enough to do a live stream. So it's, you know, kind of crapped the bed and didn't work out. So uh, if you saw, you know, the the first 10 minutes of those streams, you're going to see me kind of repeat myself a little bit here, but that's okay because this is a historic moment and it's worth repeating and it's worth celebrating if you are pro-life, if you are a Christian. Uh, praise God, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe versus Wade and we're going to talk about what this means because a lot of people uh, think it means that, uh, you know, abortion is now a legal nationwide. That's not the case. Uh, it just means that it's, you know, given to the states to decide. Uh, there are many states that have trigger laws that automatically go into effect once Roe versus Wade was overturned that make it so abortion is basically rest highly restricted or completely illegal. We're going to go over which st states those are. Um, and of course, many states, if not most, at least half of the states here in the U.S. still have, uh, will still have abortion. And the ironic thing about it, and we're going to look at and talk about this, the ironic thing about it, you're having um, the protests break out right now in many of the blue areas that are going to maintain people's quote-unquote right to abortion. Um, so it's like this moment of irony. Of course, it's never lost, uh, amongst us and it's never realized amongst the left. Uh, they don't even realize, you know, they are walking, talking clowns and parodies of themselves. Um, but yeah, so they're going to be protesting, uh, the Roe vs. Wade decision in the very states that, they, that this uh, decision doesn't affect for the most part in the very cities that this doesn't affect for the most part, uh, go figure. And I'm sure many of them, many of these groups like Jane's Revenge, which we'll talk about, um, a little bit, uh, that are threatening to engage in mass violence. I'm sure they're going to do this in areas that probably aren't going to be affected by this decision. But in the red states where you have constitutional carry, where you have people bearing arms, where you're probably not going to see as many, uh, I guess, riots, um, there probably won't, you know, be as many. Because if if there were, well, you know, a lot more people will be shot, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, they know better, I would think, maybe to not engage in too much uh, shenanigans in these red states with constitutional carry um, that uh, actually are affected by this decision. So it's it's a moment of irony, but we're going to read this article here. Supreme Court overturns Roe versus Wade, praise God, um, ending 50 years of federal abortion, quote unquote, rights. You know, and so just to summarize here what this is, it's a five- to four decision, but you know the the middle man, one of the middlemen, uh, John Roberts, Justice Roberts, actually just ended up siding with the majority. So it was actually six to three, um, the official decision. Um, but he was kind of in the middle. So, um, Clarence Thomas, his comments on this uh, allude to the fact that you know possibly uh, gay marriage will will also be contested in the future by the Supreme Court um, and maybe overturned. That would be uh, another th th glory to God moment. But um, you know what this actually means right now with Roe versus Wade being overturned. Uh, what it was actually speaking to is whether or not the federal U.S. Constitution guarantees you the right to get an abortion. Whether or not that applies under the Constitution, which obviously it doesn't, the Founding Fathers wouldn't even conceive of the idea of ever making abortion a, a, a right. It's just uh, laughable. So, um, you know, the question was, does the Constitution in its language, specifically with due process and other things, does it protect somebody's right to get an abortion? You know, similar to how it protects your right to free speech and your right for, uh, to bear arms and your right to uh, freedom of press and, you know, um, uh, you know, exercise of religion, etc. Um, and the answer, according to the Supreme Court now, is no. That was, you know, when they decided back in the 70s that somehow uh, it, it was your right to get... I mean, it's just like, what? It's your right to... Um, um, uh, murder the unborn. How does that make any sense? Um, I don't even know what they were thinking, but 
Um, that being said, yeah, this is what we got uh, going on here. The Supreme Court on Friday overturned Roe versus Wade in a landmark ruling. Um, uh, the court's controversial but expected ruling uh, gives individual states the power to set their own abortion laws without concern of running afoul of Roe, which had permitted abortions during the first two trimesters of pregnancy. Almost half the states are expected to outlaw or severely restrict abortion as a result of the Supreme Court's decision, which is related to a highly restrictive new Mississippi abortion law. Um, the laws will affect tens of millions of people around the country who may have access or may have to cross state lines to seek reproductive health care. Oh, Lord forbid. And then, by the way, you know, it's kind of like, uh, um, you know, uh, it's like, remember when they were criticizing <laughs> um, Kyle Rittenhouse for crossing state lines and saying that he like, uh, <laughs> he like committed a felony because he crossed state lines. It's like, well, you know, now we got um, uh, women and men and men. Let's not let's not be transphobic here, okay? And men that may end up crossing state lines to commit uh, what in some states will now be considered murder. And um, yeah, so uh, other states plan to maintain more liberal rules governing the termination of pregnancies. Supporters of abortion rights immediately condemn the ruling, uh, while abortion opponents praised the decision that had long ho- they had long hoped for and worked to ensure. Protesters descended on the Supreme Court on Friday to speak out both for and against a decision that will upend decades of precedent in the U.S. Praise the Lord. Um. So that's all being said. Let's look at some of the states that uh, now will be banning abortion. Um, uh, Texas, yeah, obviously, you know, the, the states you would expect here. You got Texas, you got Oklahoma, you got Arkansas, you got Louisiana, and, um, uh, you know, whatever. And then you got, you know, some of the other states like Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Missouri, et cetera, uh, Idaho. Um, Arizona, Georgia, South Carolina, West Virginia. So a lot of these states are going to and already have um, banned abortion. And um, it is now illegal in many of these states. And what people are talking about now, the hot button issue is the based black guy. Uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas some of his some of his comments uh, on the supporting uh, decision to to overturn Roe versus Wade he does end up bringing up other cases and other precedents set that question the legality of a nationwide uh, gay marriage affirmation um and even contraception for the gays etc and moving on in the article here thomas in the concurring opinion uh that he wrote siding with other conservative justices in voting to overturn roe cited the rationale for tossing out that decision as he called for the other old cases unrelated to abortion to be reconsidered Quote, the court well explains why, under our substantive due process precedents, the purported right to abortion is not a form of liberty, quote-unquote, protected by the due process clause of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment. Uh, That clause guarantees that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Thomas argued that the right to abortion under that clause is neither deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition nor implicit in the concept of ordered liberty. Thomas noted that the three states or three cases uh, he now says should be reconsidered by the court are not at issue in Friday's ruling to overturn Roe. So he specifically says that like we're not talking about these cases right now with Roe versus Wade, but 
Specifically, he said they are based on the idea of substantive due process, which in a prior case he called an oxymoron that lacks any basis in the Constitution. And then Thomas goes on to say that the idea that the constitutional clause that guarantees only process for depriving a person of life, liberty, or property cannot be used to define the substance of those rights. While Thomas said that he uh, agrees that nothing in the Roe-related ruling Friday should be understood to cast doubt on precedents that do not concern abortion, in future cases, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Oberfell. So, he says, because any substantive due process decision is demonstrably erroneous, we have a duty to, quote, correct the error established in those precedents, Thomas added. So, what he's saying is, you know, the due process clause, uh, it, it, it guarantees due process if you're going to lose your rights. In other words, like if you're going to be, you know, put in prison, right? Um, so if you commit crime, so due process is owed to you. But the due process clause in the Constitution doesn't elaborate on what those rights are uh that 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 are being taken away from you when you're put into prison for instance for committing a crime it just elaborates the fact that you're owed due process so other rights in the constitution are just listed plainly right and those are the rights that that can be taken away from you with due process if you commit crimes right if you go if you commit murder for instance right uh if you just like you know could commit theft or murder or something like that so you're owed due process uh, in which your 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 life, liberty, and property are, are basically taken away from you, and you're put in jail, right? Right. So, like, your rights can be taken away if you commit like a hor hor horrendous crime. I mean, we all know that. I mean, it's no secret. Um. So you're owed due process in that case. Uh. So, but the Constitution doesn't list anywhere, as he says, especially in the, this amendment that says do, uh, about due process, it doesn't list anywhere what what these rights are besides the second amendment and the first amendment and the third amendment and fourth amendment but in those amendments there's nothing about abortion right there's nothing about gay sex there's nothing you know it's like obviously right if you read it it's just you know it doesn't say anything about any of that so um those aren't some of the rights you're guaranteed you're just not owed this uh, this idea that uh you know uh, you're allowed to uh, just murder your own children. Like, you're just not given that as a right in the Constitution. It's just obvious. And to say, oh, because the Constitution owes you due process, that it gives you the right to murder your own fetus in your womb, um, that just doesn't make any sense. And Thomas elaborates on that in his concurring opinion here. And so some of these other uh, cases that... Uh, try to claim that uh need to be questioned <laughs> he actually says they're erroneous he actually says like this this is bulk this is bullshit you know so it's pretty based what he's saying um so yes gay marriage isn't something that's owed to you you, you don't have uh the right to, to to get married if if you're gay uh like you just don't have that right it's not listed in the constitution in the law now we can have a debate whether or not that should be added right we can have a debate about that and i think probably a lot of americans would agree maybe it should i don't necessarily think it should because i think it contradicts the christian morality that our nation was founded on that the constitution was written about and that you know the the best form of uh society is run i think i think personally you know um it it negates the idea of it being marriage marriage is defined as man and woman coming together because there, it does uh, allude to this idea that there should be the possibility of children right um because if you're if you're the problem with with gay marriage in my opinion and, and it being um related to this idea of marriage um is that like gay sex is strictly for pleasure right um whereas it, at least 
like heterosexual sex is the possibility of children and family and of course there's the argument it's like well some women or men are infertile like i understand that but like in concept for most people it's 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 alluding alluding to that idea it's not just about pleasure it's about spiritual it's like about a spiritual union and the formation of family which uh can in in most cases lead to children and that uh harmonious natural um effect of family right that's sort of what it is right and it's not that you know a man and a woman who are like infertile or something are precluded from that it's just that in general that is what marriage is alluding to right that's where it's aiming toward so the idea of having two men or two women come together in in a marriage you can call it something else and still give them see I'm, I'm actually okay with that if you want to call it like civil union under the law um uh or something like that um and then grant them the st same tax because there's all this bull crap it's like well uh, the the married couples have like uh more tax benefits and stuff uh okay yeah yeah okay so you want to yeah, let's just call it something else and make everyone happy right if that's all you want is the tax benefits <laughs> you know oh you want the legal benefits of marriage you're, you're being denied your right you're being denied your rights it's like okay yeah okay you want to save like a thousand bucks at the uh at the end of five years or something okay fine um like we can just call it something else and give you those same rights if you want, like I'm fine with that. I think, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't like pondered on this enough. This is just my general thoughts on it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, and a lot of people aren't gonna agree with my opinion on this. So, uh, like I understand, like by by and large, I don't even think gay marriage is gonna be challenged, like like abortion here, because uh, there's just too much support nationwide if you even even um like a lot of conservatives support the idea of gay marriage you know it just is what it is right um that doesn't mean i do but you know it's fine you know it's fine if, if everyone supports it and they want to you know uh just toss away the idea of like uh the 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 sanctity of of what marriage should be to 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 gays fine i mean whatever you know it's just it, it is what it is like what am i gonna do so that being said let's move on here the left is getting really pissed off and they're getting to the streets and they're um protesting you can see here antifa uh in dc with their black block outfits and their umbrellas um being escorted by the police go figure you know um also, we last night uh, because I, I'm recording half of this tomorrow morning, right? So I recorded the, actually the first half of it last yesterday. Um, so you see the beginning of this video on Friday, but now uh, this is Saturday morning, and uh, last night there was some uh, violence, of course, uh, that broke out. You can see here a woman, uh, a pro-life um, woman, attacked here. Uh, bash in the head yesterday and then you can see here this is in la um one of the protesters brought a homemade flamethrower and tried to t attack police with it and of course again all of these protests all of them that i'm seeing except for the arizona ones that i'll show you um most of them are happening in the blue cities and blue areas and blue states that aren't going to have a change in abortion, right? So there's not going to be any change in the law in these states. And of course, it's just the irony isn't lost. Um, and they're protesting in the very areas and against the very um, cities and states that are in support and aren't going to change the abortion laws they have in the books. Um and the Department of Homeland Security has released a memo warning about the likely increase in domestic violent extremist activity by the far left in response to the Supreme Court. The memo cites attacks from Jane's Revenge and the assassination attempt on Ju uh, Judge Kavanaugh. So, yes, um, you know, just in the weeks leading up to this decision, we've had pregnancy centers firebombed, other places lit on fire, pro-life uh, organizations attacked um 
we've had Judge Kavanaugh um, being threatened and there was an assassination attempt, which the media just totally covered up, didn't report about. And then uh, again, more irony, not lost in these people attacking uh, cars in the freeway in L.A., a city in which I guarantee most of these people they're attacking just trying to get to work, trying to block the freeway here. Most of these people agree with them, but they're attacking them. I mean, they just, they're just they just ravage. They're just savages, dude, uh, in the worst way. Um, here we go. They're, you know, homemade flamethrowers, fireworks, throwing, um, you know, milkshakes at the cops. Just, you know, in, in the cities that pr- support what they believe in of course um now this is where it gets uh, spicy arizona in phoenix the pro abortion mob has uh been attacking um the the state uh capital there um in arizona uh so banging on windows we have wendy rogers here um uh, a politician in Arizona, uh, she's extremely based. Uh, I think she's just like a congressperson in the Arizona Senate. Senate. Um, I've heard of her. Actually, I'm in her Telegram group, and I I follow it at times. She's probably one of the most ba- one of the most based GOP politicians out there. I mean, like truly. Um, so they're attacking and threatening her and her. Um, Senate office in Arizona. You can see this tweet here. Possible AZ Senate security breach. uh, Education protesters threatened to break the AZ Arizona Senate entryway glass. We assembled the take tunnel to the House. Crowd was dispersed with tear gas. Went back into the Senate. Senate building is secure. No exiting due to tear gas. We still have six bills to vote on. Tear gas odor remnant in Senate chamber. So, you know, it's it's almost a little bit like the January 6th thing, right? A little bit. uh, But, of course, uh, you're not going to hear anything about it in media like you heard about January 6th. They're trying to say it's the worst thing since Pearl Harbor 9-11. It's just uh, like, oh. And the only people that died, of course, in January 6th uh, were people that um, were part of the protest crowd. Of course, like Ashley Babbitt. Rest in peace. Um... So it's just, you know, of course, the hypocrisy is just so flagrant, so flagrant um, when it comes to the media. Uh, and, and in D.C., we, we see here now uh, 10 full pallets of bricks being left down the street from the Capitol com- complex and across the street from the RNC. Well, what do you know? Look at that. Isn't that funny how that works? Hmm. Now, we also have this. This is on Reddit. Really kind of interesting. You know, the left might be smartening up a little bit because um, uh, I did mention how most of the places they're attacking actually are in full support of, of their, uh, you know, uh, desire to abort children. Um, but uh, let me see if we can see this uh, on the screen here. Uh, yeah, you actually can. Okay. So um, this is uh, on Reddit. Uh, they're actually becoming wise to this idea and they're saying well maybe we should go to the rural communities and start attacking people in small towns outside the city because that's where most of the pro-life people are uh and you can see out of this post here the radical christians are found in the rural areas their towns are defenseless they have almost no cops and their firemen are volunteers they have to borrow cop cops and firemen from neighboring jurisdictions miles away in order to handle anything big And they think they're safe out there. Forget burning cities. Cities are on our sides. It's time for rural areas to feel the heat. You should show up 100 deep in every rural town in a 50-mile radius intent on revolution. You'll crash their system and make them pay. And if you you think I'm at all kidding, I'm dead serious. Uh, This was caused... uh, this was caused by uh, backward-ass rural conservatives operating out of a Christianized worldview. Even if they're not Christian, they're heavily influenced by it. They were the ones who voted for Trump in 2016. Those disillusioned, redneck, white trash, blue-collar, to quote a country song, types who flipped massively for the GOP. 
punish them, punish their towns. They say BLM burn the cities to the ground. I say let them see firsthand what it's like when a community is truly burned to the ground. They want a civil war. They should have been, uh, they should have been careful what they asked and voted for. I'm not the organizing type, but maybe someone who can organize that. Start a certain state. Start in a certain state in the Midwest, often called the South's middle finger to America. <laughs> it's literally what the South uh, would have looked like if it wasn't reconstructed. You know, tough guy, tough guy here on Reddit. Um, just Reddit is full of a bunch of losers. Who is hers? So, yeah, that's what we have. And um, now we have radical activists handing out the address of the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, our based black, uh, black uh, justice here, um, for organized protests to threaten him. Radical protesters who had gathered to protest the, uh, the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade were handing out the address of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, according to a new report from the scene. I love how the attorney general, uh, Biden's attorney general, isn't investigating any of this. You know, you're, you're not seeing any announcement. To uh, First of all, this should have, like, like if, if it were fair, if it were uh, balanced, right, the attorney general would have announced... As soon as pregnancy centers were being firebombed weeks ago, and as soon as Justice Kavanaugh was uh, almost assassinated, like there would have been uh, announcements of investigations. You would have seen it and heard it all across the media um, uh, just for, for, for weeks and weeks and weeks if it were the other way around. And it's worth pointing out, and I know that's sort of a... a uh, like like a like a cliche at this point, the hypocrisy and the double standard is so flagrant. We just got to keep pointing it out and hope uh, it reaches people because it it really is crazy. You know, um, no announcement to investigate this to launch uh you know a, a task force against um the uh, far left extremism and terrorism. Um, uh, it's something that that, that has happened in the past as well. I mean, it's not just recent. Um, you know, you had the weather underground, you had, I mean, you just had the 2020 riots, you had, I mean, it just goes on forever, forever, right? Um, so, of course, they're just ignoring it, and now they're handing out these, um, they're handing out these, uh, flyers, um, showing and telling people where Clarence Thomas lives because they want to threaten him. And, of course, they'll get a, a couple crazy, crazy people to try to, uh, God forbid, um, like assassinate him or something. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and it says here, Luke Moseman of the Maricopa County Young Republicans posted the video confronting the protesters in front of the Supreme Court who are organizing the alleged threat against the justice. Why are you assaulting a justice uh, and going to their house, uh, Moseman said. Don't you feel like that side is going against the republic and the system? Why would you do such a thing? I would never do that if I disagreed with the case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can't rationalize with these people, bro. I don't know what you're trying to do, but... Um In early June, a fully armed man was arrested for attempting to assassinate Kavanaugh, yada, 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 yes, so... so yeah, you get it. Um, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, so my prediction is this in general. You will see. I mean, God forbid, but I think you just it's just a fact of life. But you'll see attacks on any groups or individuals that are pro-life. Uh, and specifically the ones that are responsible for this decision. Um, uh, whether it's Clarence Thomas or any of the conservative justices or some of the organizations that just, uh, support pro-life, uh, principles and uh, take action in regards to that, like pregnancy centers or churches, uh, Catholic Christian churches, uh, across America and rural communities, possibly, uh, that would be interesting, but, uh, yeah, good luck with that because rural communities are armed to the teeth and many of these churches are by the way, too, and it doesn't really matter that much where they are. Uh, many of these churches as well that are pro-life, just like sort of conservative leaning, 
um, are indeed armed to the teeth uh, at their services. So, you know, you got to be careful. Uh, <laughs> I would be careful if I were you. If I were you, uh, far left extremist, I would just be careful. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff you got to uh, we'll, 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 we'll look at. So my prediction is that is going to continue, unfortunately, you know, the, the threats of violence and acts of violence. But... Uh, I don't think you'll see mass rioting like you did in 2020 with the George Floyd incident and BLM and all of that because I don't think the black community is quite as motivated by this as they were uh, per police brutality against blacks and the George Floyd incident um, because there are there are a good amount of uh, you know black folks even even left leaning black folks that understand like abortion actually mostly affects like the black community and black. Uh, mothers and babies right so you know it's mostly minorities it's mostly the, the the black folks who are going to these abortion centers and getting abortions so i mean that's that's not a secret uh and, and most people know that so you know they're just not highly motivated to go out and riot over this i don't think um some will but i mean i don't think you're going to see it on a mass scale on top of that i don't think you're going to see a lot of these ngos um, and the Democrats in general and the media in general really encourage uh, violence on a mass scale like they did with the BLM riots in 2020 because they wanted uh, things to fall apart with, with, with the conservatives in power and Trump in office. Uh, now that Biden's in office, they don't want things that just are. I mean, it's already going bad enough. I mean, to have inflation, high gas prices, supply chain shortages, people, you know, joblessness, uh, while at the same time, somehow staff shortages and and all of these crazy things economically going on, along with mass rioting and the, the cities getting burned down in mass, I think might be too much for them. And I think they're going to try to get their. Uh, they're, they're foot soldiers, new world order minions and demonically possessed, um, you know, uh, little pawns out there in Antifa and, and, and some of these groups, they're going to try to quell them a bit and say, Hey, look, you guys, like, I understand you're under a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We'll let that go. We're not going to pr prosecute you, but look, you got to stop because we have an election coming up with the 2022 midterms and it's already looking like a, a, a red wave and not like a fake red wave, not like a neocon red, red wave, like like sort of a grassroots red wave where people are pretty pissed off now and just deciding to run, uh, especially for like the state local elections, which are actually probably more important at this point since, as I said before, the, the country is breaking up. Um, and states are going to have more autonomy and more um, independence, um, just sort of become their own countries uh, in the next 10 years. So, you know, these are really important. And uh, so they, they want to tone it down a bit, I think, because just mass rioting and, and burning everything down will probably scare people and encourage them to vote for more sort of independent slash anti-establishment Republican types. Uh, in the coming 2022 midterms this fall. So um, that's my prediction, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Share this video. Follow me on Gab and Twitter, and also on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. And if you want to become a Patreon member, uh, there's links for that in the description below. Uh, for live shows, we're going to start doing call-ins. I'm going to post the link for people. They'll be able to come in you know, during during a show in the future and just, uh, you know, uh, ask a question or say what's up, you know, um, and, um, you know, that's going to be posted for Patreons in the future. We're going to start setting that up. I was going to try to do that last night, but of course my internet wasn't working. So that being said, it's been press. Keep your head up, stay real and no fear.